So guys, we are going to continue with the fourth video and we are going to deal with buffer solution. So what is actually a buffer solution? So a buffer solution is a solution where the pH does not change much when a little of acid or base is added to the solution. So generally there are two types of solution, namely acidic buffer solution and also alkaline buffer solutions. So the examples of acidic buffer solutions consist of a weak acid and a salt of the weak acid itself. So the salt contributed the conjugate base of the weak acid. So for example, an aqueous solution which contains equal amount of the moles of ethanoic acid CH3COH and sodium ethanoate CH3CONA. So the salt supply the conjugate base CH3CO minus of the weak ethanoic acid. Whereas alkaline buffer solution is a solution that consists of a weak base and a salt of the weak base. So the salt contributed the conjugate acids. Uh, of the weak base. So for example, an equal solution with equal solution uh, an equal solution with equal amount of ammonia and salt of ammonium chloride. So the salt supply, uh, supply the ammonium ions inside the weak base. So how is the application of the buffer solutions? So an acid buffer solution has a pH somewhere between 4 to 7. So to see how acidic buffer solutions works, consider a mixture of sodium ethanoate and ethanoic acid. So uh, sodium ethanoate fully dissociate in water whereas uh, ethanoic acid partially dissociate in water. So the mixture contains high concentration of conjugate base because you have a lot of CH3CO- but yet the concentration of H plus is low. So basically inside the system we have three things. So we have um, conjugate base, we have acid and we have CH3COH. So our priority is to make sure that the H plus in here does not virtually remain unchanged. So when a small amount of acid is added to the buffer solution, large number of ethanoid ion will react with the H plus. So when it large amount of ion react with the H plus, so the H plus inside the system is not disturbed, therefore VH virtually remain constant. Whereas if a small amount of OH- is added, so the OH- from the base will react with the hydrogen ion. So at this moment, concentration of the hydrogen ion decreases. So lee chatelier principle will suggest that equation number 2 in here will shift to the right to compensate the H plus loss by the system so that the pH will remain virtually unchanged. An alkaline buffer solution works almost in the same way. So, an alkaline buffer solution consists of a weak base which is partially dissociated and the salt of the weak base which is completely dissociated. So, you have a high concentration of ammonium ion, yet you have a low concentration of the hydroxide ions and also some of the ammonia salt in here. Ammonia solution in here. So if a small amount of acid is added, so the small amount of acid will react with the OH- inside the solution. So concentration of OH- decrease. So at this moment, equilibrium here will shift to the right in order to compensate the, pH, the OH- loss from the system. Therefore, pH will uh, remain virtually unchanged. And if a small amount of OH, uh, NH uh, bases is added, so the base will react with the NH4 plus to form back the ammonia salt. Again, this will keep the OH- remain unchanged, therefore pH remain constant. So the advantage of buffer solution is counted for stability of the acidity of solutions as it does not change much even after long exposure to air. So the pH of an acid or basic buffer solution can be calculated by hand, hence prepared according to the weak acid conjugate base ratio. So um, whatever it is, uh, uh, the derivation you can see from here, uh, Ka is expressed in this way. We arrange the Ka, we have H2O plus is equal to Ka times HA over A minus. So negative log, we have uh, negative log of H2O plus equals negative log Ka times negative log of HA over A minus. So as simply the final equations in here, for the buffer solution is pH equals to pKa minus log weak acid and the conjugate base which is the salt. So same goes with the base. So you have pOH equals to pKb minus the log of the weak base over the conjugate acids. So these equations uh, later if we have time we will show you some examples for it. So buffer solution can also be prepared by titrating a weak acid to a strong base to, or titrating a weak, as, uh, weak base to a strong acid. 
So uh, it can be explained during the titration of weak acid and weak base. So later we are going to discuss about that. So let's start off with the weak acid and strong base titration. So we are basically titrating uh, 25 centimeter cube of ethanoic acid 0.100 to 0.1 mole of sodium hydroxide uh, in filling the flask and the pH. Is changes occur for each milliliter added. So this is the titration curve for the weak acid and strong base. So a few points that I would like to highlight in here is number one. Uh, in here you can see that the pH unlike the strong acid strong base just now the pH starts as a relatively high pH so this can be calculated by using the formula H plus is equals to square root of Ka times C so okay, uh, given to you um, you have uh, 1.8 times 10 power of negative 5 multiply with the concentration of acid so you get around 4.47 times 10 power of negative 4 so negative log so you have pH equals to uh, 2.87 sorry 24.47 and then negative 3 so basically you have the pH equals to 2.87 you start from here okay so as you titrate so you reach us similarly at the end point at 25 centimeter cube so this is the end point of the titration now note that the end points in here has a higher pH range so the equivalent points lies somewhere in between 8 to 10 in here so the equivalent points is rather uh, alkaline so why is it that uh, showing that the salt is alkaline so why is it the salt is alkaline the salt is alkaline because the uh, ethanoic ions inside the mixture will undergo hydrolysis in water so when it undergoes hydrolysis in water you form back the ethanoic acid plus the hy uh, hydroxide ions so the hydroxide ions is the ions that cause the salt to become basic and in here uh, not all titration uh, not all indicators are suitable to be used for this titration so you have methyl orange bromotimol blue and phenolphthalein so in here only uh, bromotimol blue and phenolphthalein intercept the endpoint therefore both of them are suitable to be used as the indicator for the solutions now one more is to explain the buffer solutions so the buffer solution this is the what we call as the buffer range in here so uh, in the buffer range so this is where when some of the uh, base is added to the weak acid so uh, you can have the maximum buffer capacity uh, based on the equation where we say that pH is equals to uh, pKa minus log uh, acid over salt so if the ratio is 1 to 1 so you have pH is equals to pKa so in here uh, you can get inside the graph when half of the acids is titrating with half of the base so you have your half of the endpoint so half of the endpoint occur at 12.5 so this is where you have a pH is equals to pKa okay, at half of the endpoint so uh, when half of the endpoint occur, the mole of acid is equal to the mole of salt. That, that is why you have pH is equal to pKa in here. So this is how we explain for the acidic buffer solutions and also weak acid and strong base titration. Next, we shall have a look at strong acid and weak base titration. So strong acid and weak base titration because it is strong acid, so you start at one. So uh, in here, uh, the endpoints is around this range. So uh, you might find that the uh, uh, equivalent point uh, is somewhere in between the acid range. So uh, similarly, we explain by the fact that it undergoes a uh, hydrolysis. So when ammonium salt react, uh, undergoes hydrolysis in water, we have NH4 react with H2O to form NH3 plus H2O plus. So it is because it react to form H2O plus, that is why the equivalent point is acidic. So what are the indicators suitable to be used for this titration? We have methyl orange, bromotimol blue, and phenolphthalein. So since methyl orange and bromotimol blues are intercepting the endpoints, therefore it is suitable to be used as calculate, uh, 
indicator. Now in this case, usually we do not prefer, prepare a buffer solutions in this case because uh, too much of the solutions already inside the uh, concentration, so therefore we do not uh, really go into the basic buffer solutions in here. Okay, so this is how the basic buffer solution system works. Next, we are going to have a look at polypropylene acid. So a polypropylene acid is an acid that dissociates more than one mole of hydrogen ion in its acid. So some of the common polypropylene acid include sulfuric acid, carbonic acid, phosphoric acid. So except for sulfuric acid, common polypropylene acids are usually weak acid. So this acid undergoes stages of dissociation with different dissociation constant value. For example, sulfurous acid H2SO3. So it undergoes first stage of dissociation where H2SO3 plus H2O give HSO3 minus plus H3O plus. Second stage of Association HSO3 plus give SO3 2 minus plus H2O plus. So each of them has can be expressed as different Ka value with a different pKa values in here. So when the graph of uh, so from both equation we can derive that the overall Ka value for the dipotic acid. So uh, replacing Ka1 times Ka2, so you cancel this one and this one. So at the end of the day you shall have SO23 and then plus 2 H2O and then uh, plus H2SO3. So this is equivalent to the Ka values in here. So since Ka is equals to Ka1 times Ka2, so you have the Ka for this solution is 9.1 times 10 power negative 10. So in the titration of diprotic acid, so two OH minus are required to completely remove the H plus from each molecule. So therefore, you have two uh, endpoints in here. So the diagram below shows the endpoints in between the two titration. Where in the first stage of dissociation, you will see H2SO3 react with NaOH to form NaHSO3 plus H2O. And in the second stage of dissociation, you have NaHSO3 plus NaOH give Na2SO3 plus H2O. So uh, this is the two endpoints that we are talking about in here. So this is the first endpoint for the first stage of titration where you have NaOH react with the um, H2SO3 to form uh, NaHSO3 plus H2O and then um, uh, this is the second stage of the endpoint where we have our NaHSO3 react with another NaOH to form uh, Na2SO3 plus H2O. So each of them has different uh, endpoints. So when you have different endpoints, so uh, you use different indicator to test a different stage of the titrations in here. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, that will be all for the polypropylene acid, uh, weak acid, so uh, buffer solution, and so polypropylene titration. So we'll continue in the next video. Thank you.